any dropped items. Yeah. So if you do drop something, just let me know and we'll do our best to get it back to you. We make no guarantees as to the condition that it may be returned to you in. Now we should have the all clear here in just a moment. And we're good to go. So we are going to go ahead and begin our safari. We're going to start out here in the Ituri Forest. The Ituri Forest is home to a lot of animals that use camouflage to hide themselves as a way to protect themselves from predators. We do like to hide out here in the forest. We want to keep an eye out. You can see the greater kudu over here on the left hand side of there. It's going to be those light brown antelopes. You have those white stripes, which they'll use for camouflage, helps them to blend in with the vegetation out here in the forest. You can see the okapi over here on the right hand side. The okapi has those striped lights, which kind of look like a zebra stripes. They're not actually related to zebras at all, though. They are close relatives of the giraffe. They're actually going to be in the same family. You may see that black and white bird up on the hill there as well. That is a saddle built stork. Got that yellow bird on its bill, which kind of looks like a saddle. That's the name. And of course, the bongos up there on the hill as well. Those orange colored antelopes. We also have those white stripes for camouflage. The bongos have earned the nickname the ghosts of the forest because they are not often seen out in the wild, which is true of quite a lot of the animals out here in the forest. They are also pretty shy and reclusive. So we'll see find any more animals hiding out up ahead here. over here on the right hand side, these gray birds with the long bills. They have that light pink coloring on their backs, which is pretty light, but it does get a little bit brighter during mating season. These birds are colonial nesters, which means that they'll nest in large groups of up to 500. hippopotamus hanging out in the water here. They can spend most of their time under the water. They can hold their breath for up to eight minutes. They will come up onto the bank sometimes as well to graze their herbivores, which means they only eat plants. And they're not actually very good swimmers, so instead of swimming through the water, they'll kind of walk along underneath the surface. You can see them doing that uh, right now. These hippos can weigh up to 5,500 pounds. They're herbivores, which means that they only eat plants. 
they will come up onto the bank sometimes to graze. called the upside down tree for that reason. The baobab tree can actually store water inside of its trunk. Some animals can rip the bark off and drink the water inside. And that's why they also call it the tree of life. It looks like we are about to make our way on down to the savannah here shortly. This hill gives us a great view of the savannah up ahead here. So we see some animals up ahead as we start to make our way on down. We're gonna get a little bit closer to them here in a bit. up ahead here as well. Zebras do have a unique stripe pattern, so no two are exactly the same, kind of like a fingerprint. The baby zebra will imprint on its mother's stripe pattern so that it can always recognize her in a herd. And a group of zebras is called a dazzle. And they're all together in a big group. Uh, those black and white stripes can create kind of a dazzling effect, which can disorient predators. But it's not necessarily the same thing as a camouflage like we saw with the other animals in the forest. Since it is a lot more open out here on the savanna, there's not as many places to hide. So camouflage isn't going to be quite as effective um, as a defense against predators. A lot of animals out here rely more on their speed and agility. successful hunters in the world. Coming up here around the left hand side, we'll see some sable antelopes sitting down back there. It's those brown ones with the long curved horns. 
Alive Love will use their horns as protection against predators that would try to jump on their backs. So they're a good example of one of those animals that's really going to use their agility to their advantage out here on the savanna. And we'll also see the wildebeest over here on the left. The wildebeest will move in really large herds of up to 1.5 million. And they'll travel hundreds of miles during migration season in those huge herds following fresh food and water. And those herds are so big that when they stampede, uh, a stampede of wildebeest that large can actually be seen all the way from outer space. structure inside which actually helps to keep them cool kind of their own built-in cooling system looks like up on the hill here off to the right we'll also see some springbok up there so a little kind of caramel colored antelopes the white and dark brown stripe springbok are also super agile they can leap up to six feet in the air and 13 feet across it looks like over on the left we'll see an eland laying down up on the hill there that uh, kind of tan colored antelope. One of the largest antelopes in the world. Elons have also really adapted to the drier conditions out here on the savanna. They can actually go for several weeks without drinking any water. They get a lot of their hydration from the vegetation that they eat. We'll see some more wildebeest up ahead here as well as um, those springbok uh, maybe a little bit closer over here. You can kind of walk around over there. The springbok is also the national animal of South Africa. walking around back there. The androls are the largest monkeys in the world. They have that distinct blue and red coloring on their faces. It's going to be a little bit brighter on males. You know, do have that coloring as well. Unfortunately, though, out in the wild, uh, there are not a lot of elephants left. They are endangered. A lot of that is due to poaching for their tusks. 
No tusks are just another set of teeth. We'll see if we can find any more elephants up ahead here as we continue through elephant country here. are gathering places for animals out here on the savannah where water is more scarce. thousand pounds. They get their name from the Afrikaans word vite, which actually means wide, not white. It's referring to their wide square mouth, not their color. Unfortunately, though, out of the wild, rhinos are also critically endangered. A lot of that is due to poaching for their horns. There's a myth that rhino horns have healing properties. They're actually made out of keratin, which is the same thing that your hair and fingernails are made out of.
inside, we'll see a couple of lions hanging out up on the rocks here. Lions are going to be more active at night, which is when they hunt. They're going to spend most of their day just resting. They'll spend about 15 to 20 hours a day resting. We'll also see some ostriches over here on the right hand side. Ostriches are the largest birds in the world. They are flightless birds though, so they can't fly. They will use their wings to help them keep balance while they run. They can still run pretty fast. They can reach top speeds of about 35 miles an hour. some warthogs through their burrows here as well. You kind of see them laying down back there. Warthogs will back into their burrows so that they can fend off danger with their sharp tusks. They're not super picky about where they live either. They'll take over burrows that have already been dug and then abandoned by other small animals instead of actually digging their own. And it looks like coming up here over on the right we'll see a water buck. This brown shaggy antelope walking around over here. Their name suggests water bucks do drink a lot of water. They'll stay close to water sources. They are very territorial. It looks like we'll see some more of those uh, white rhinos over here as well over on the right hand side. Notice they have those big ears. They are uh, very good at hearing. Very strong senses of hearing and smell, which kind of make up for their uh, poor eyesight. Also, some ostrich eggs on the ground over there next to the rhino there. Not too far from those ostriches that we saw earlier. milk and cheese. Farmers can sell those dairy products and that keeps reliance off of local wildlife. towards the village. Yeah. I didn't mention how a lot of the animals that you saw out there are endangered out in the wild. Fortunately though, there are a lot of things that you can do to help protect these animals and their habitats. Recycling paper products in you can is a really good way to help to prevent deforestation. It's a big threat to a lot of the forests that many of these animals live in. If you'd like, you can also make a donation to the Disney Conservation Fund. So we're several different conservation efforts worldwide. You can make a donation at any of the merchandise locations right here at Animal Kingdom. Either a direct donation or you can round your purchase up to the nearest dollar or however much you'd like to give. Now it does look like we are coming back on up to the village here at our safari is about to come to an end. There are any wilderness explorers on board today, you've been riding the Simba One. It's gonna be the name of your truck so that you can make sure to get that safari badge after you get off. Out here in Harambe though, we don't really like to say goodbye because that's way too sad and way too final. So instead we like to say Kwaharini. 
Then for her any means, go well.